Amen. Blessed be the name. We're in lesson uh, 10, and uh, as we contrast the Word of God, rightly divided, and we understand some things that we've been going over, uh, today is we're talking about the numbers. So the number 12 is associated with Israel. Be turning to Genesis chapter 32. Um, I'll share this with you right quick. The numbers of, uh, of the number 12 is the eternal perfection. It is the product of the divine number three and the number four, the world number. There are, there are 12 tribes of Israel, right? Uh, there's 12 stones in the high priest's breastplate. Uh, there's 12 uh, cakes in the showbread. There's 12 wells at the water of Elm. There's 12 spies that went into Canaan. Uh, Joshua placed 12 stones in the bed of Jordan. Elijah built an altar with 12 stones. Solomon molten sea stood on 12 br br brass oxen. Uh, in the New Testament, if you will, we read at 12 years of age that Jesus visited the temple. Uh, that, and, then, and then he chose what? 12 apostles. And his father would send him uh, send at his request 12 legions of angels um, and, and, the, and the 12 year old daughter of Jairus in the book of Revelations we read the woman will have 12 stars and that, and, and that the new Jerusalem will have 12 gates and the gates of 12 angels and there's 12 foundations and the name of them are 12 apostles of the Lamb and, and, and it bears a tree uh, there's a tree that bears in the garden that bears what? Twelve manners of fruit. Uh, and then that life on f four squares and measures 12,000 furlongs, a side by side, 144 cubits, uh, or 12 times 12. We also know that the regeneration, the 12 apostles will sit on 12 thrones. We'll look at that in a few minutes. Judging who? The 12 tribes of Israel. So there's clear that the final thing about Israel and, and we'll have a place on this earth in the number 12. So I told you to be turning to Genesis chapter 32, starting with verse 24. Genesis 32, verse 24. Well, you know that he, uh, he's wrestling with the angel there, right? And uh, so uh, he rose up at night and took his two wives and, uh, let's see, where am I at? Uh, verse 27. No, go to verse 24. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of the thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, it, He said, Jacob. And he said, Thou, thou name shall be no, called no more Jacob, but who? Israel. For as a for as a prince hast thou power with God and with men and hast prevailed. So this is where Jacob's names change from Jacob to Israel. Got it? So when you hear Israel, you're it's referring to Jacob. And his uh, go to uh, go to Genesis chapter 35. Genesis chapter 35. And verse 23. Verse 22 is very, very interesting. I'm sure you all seen this before. Verse 22. And it came to pass when Israel dwelt in that land that Reuben went and laid with, was that Belha? 
his father's concubine, and Israel heard of it. Now the sons of Jacob were what? Twelve. twelve. So there's twelve of them there. Twelve sons of Israel. The, the, and he names them. The sons of Leah, Reuben, Jacob, firstborn, and Simeon, and Levi, and Judah, and Eschar, and Zebulun, and the sons of Rachel, uh, uh, Joseph, and Benjamin. And then when he names the other two, the sons of Bala, Bala, Rachel's handmaid, Dan, and, and was that Nef, 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 Natala, and the sons of Zepla, Leah's handmaid, Glad, and Azer, and these are the sons of Jacob, which was born to him in Panda Arama. So the first two, Leah and Rachel, are free people, right? And the other ones are handmaidens. But that verse 22, Reuben went and laid with one of his concubines, laid with the, uh, and then he had sons, Dan and the other one. I thought that was very interesting. So, I, But Jacob's naming them. So she, he laid with her, if you know what I'm talking about. And uh, so there's 12 of them, right? And then uh, go to Deuteronomy chapter 32 again. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Verse 7. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people that was with him, and the flocks and the herds and the camels and the two bands. And he, and he s said, If es Esau come to the one company and smite it, then the other company which is left shall escape. And Jacob said, O God, my father Abraham, and the God of my father Isaac, and the Lord which said unto me, Return unto thy country and thy kindred, and I will deal with thee. So, I think that's right. I probably should have went. I'm in Genesis. i got to go to Deuteronomy. <laughs> Why am I? Uh, sorry about that. I'm like, this don't. Go to Deuteronomy. Sorry. Deuteronomy 32. My, my, excuse, my, my ignorance. Should have said, what? No, preacher. What version are you reading out of? Deuteronomy 32. Verse 7. There we go. Remember the days of old, considering the years of my, many generations. Ask thou father, and he sh will show thee, thou elders, and they will tell thee. God will, God will rule in the land of Jacob. That's what he's saying right here. Verse 8, when the, when the Most High God divideth to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the son of Adam, sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of who? Israel. Now, how many are they? Twelve. Twelve. So there's bounds of there. Verse 9. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is a lot of his inheritance. God chose it. Okay? He's chose 12 of them. He's using Israel as his inheritance. Nobody else. Go to Matthew chapter 19. Matthew 19. So you know the history of Israel. We looked at this before. The uh, 12 tribes, and uh, they're being very prosperous in the land until they started what? Fornicating with other uh, gods and mixing with other nations, and God told them not to do that. And, then, you know, when God tells you not to do that and you do it, what happens? You usually end up in trouble, right? Matthew chapter 19. Matthew 19, verse 28. This is the same thing we read in Deuteronomy chapter uh, 7 and 9. Verse 28. And Jesus said unto them, well, verse 27 says, Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee, what shall we have therefore? He's wanting a little reward, ain't he? 
Yeah, the big payday. Verse 28, And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory, ye shall sit on the, uh, sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And every one of you that have forsaken houses and brethren and sisters and fathers and mo or mothers and or wives, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. That's the Great Commission, okay, part of the Great Commission. But that, uh, what we read back in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verses 7 and 9, that's right there, the throne of His glory, and the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes. 12, 12, 12. Go to Revelation chapter 9. No, Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7, starting in verse 4. And I heard the number of them which was sealed. And, and, and there were sealed a, a hundred and forty and four thousand of the tribes, of all the tribes of the children of Israel. How many tribes are they? And if you, if you, want, if you read them down through there, they take them through there. And you know who else, you know who's included in this tribe? Levi. Levi, before, they didn't have an inheritance. That's why, that's why the tribes paid them. 10%. But now they got the inheritance. Just left out, Dan. I think Dan is left out. Yep. Well, who was his mama? <laughs> no, we just read it a little while ago. Bihala. Bala. Yeah. That, that was who did Reuben sleep with? I'm like, is this a coincidence? Because Dan, he, he, was, he was a lot of trouble. But Dan means to judge. <laughs> Believe it or not. So anyway, so there's 12,000 from 12 tribes. So that makes what? 12 times 12. 140,000. John chapter 11. John chapter 11. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Verse 9 says, And Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? So he even uses twelve, right? And we know there's twelve hours a night, supposedly, right? So that makes, what, twenty-four hours. So there's twelve hours in a day, twelve hours at night. There's four and twelve, twenty elders up on the Mount Configuration, or on the sides of the north. There's twenty-four hours in a day. So it's not mistaken that God don't know how to do math. Amen. So when you think about the nation of Israel, you've got to think about that number 12 dealing with 12, 12, 12. we got, there's 12, if I'm not mistaken, there's 12 federal reserves across the United States. You know what a federal reserve is? <laughs> so, People in this world uses the number 12, and they refer, they don't realize, some of them probably don't realize they, it refers to the nation Israel, 12, 12, 12. Now, in contrast, since we're contrasting the Word of God, number one is associated with the body of Christ. Uh, number one means unity. And wouldn't it be nice if the world was in unity right now? You know that ain't going to happen until the Lord comes back. And I, it keeps striking me is the fact that when he sits on the throne, he's ruling with a rod of iron. It still don't seem like there's too much unity going on. If you had to stand there and rule with a rod of iron, is that, is that peaceful out there? No. Not at all. 
And so, so it's unity. It symbolizes the unity of God. Uh, Mark chapter 12, verse 32. John chapter 10, verse 30. All of them refers to one God. Jesus and God is one. Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit, even though it's, it's three, they're in what? One. And one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord. So Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 3. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is twelve bodies and twelve spirits, even as you are called in twelve hopes of your calling. Hello? Anybody out there? Is that what that says? Or is it, are y'all at Ephesians chapter 4? Verse 3 and 4. There is 12 bodies and 12 spirits. Is that what your body says? You should be saying, no, preacher. 12, replies, 12 reply, refers to uh, Israel, not the body of Christ. The body of Christ is one. We, there is one body, one spirit, even as your call and, your, and one hope of your calling, and one Lord, and one faith, and one baptism, and one God, and the, uh, uh, and the Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. So, one is doing dealing with the body of Christ. God, uh, Jesus Christ is the head of the body. He, he's going to, he's, we know He's King of King and Lord of Lords, and it's coming, but He's also the head of the body. Go to Galatians chapter Back one, Galatians chapter 3. See, sometimes you can get tricked in your hearing. So you better know you got a Bible. When, when, when they stood up in Pentecost, and there's 15 nations there of Jews, each one of them spoke a different dialect. And they said, these are God lands. They heard as if they were speaking their own language. So that gift wasn't so much in the tongue as what they heard. So you better be aware of what you hear out there on the radio lands and TV lands. Because if you're here, you can hear one thing and you're like, wait a minute. You better follow along. That's not what that says. You with me? That's why you better have a, a good text and a, and a majority text and know you have an authorized version in the English-speaking language that we can trust. That way when somebody tries to convince you to it says something else, you can say, Noah, you're in error. This is what it says. I heard you say it. That's why people, when you talk to people all the time, they're like, that's your interpretation. Well, it very well could be. Because if you're not speaking what God speaks, guess what it is? It is your interpretation. Now, we can say, what do you say, ad lib it? You know, like, I can't quote it for, word for word, but this is what it says, you know. So, you know, you can do it, but you better be able to back it up with the Word of God. Galatians chapter 3. Uh, verse uh, 26 says, for ye, are all, for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all, what does it say? One. Was well, uh, uh, hold your finger there and go to Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter twelve. First Corinthians chapter twelve. 
1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12. For as, for as the body is one and hath many, uh, many members, and all members of that, that one body, being many, are one body, also, uh, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized in one body, whether it be Jew, Gentile, whether it be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. You see this oneness? One, 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 one. Not 12, 12, 12, 12, 12. Timothy, 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of our God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. So when we're referring to the word of God, referring in the contrast uh, uh, and the the, between the prophetic program, there's number 12 associated with Israel. You, when you look at the mystery program, number one associated with, with who? The, Jesus Christ and the body of Christ. So when we're made, made in oneness with him, that's who we are. Even though we're members of the body, you know, all over, we have many members, we're still in one body. Not the twelve. Not the twelve. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Verse 29 says, My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. We know that to be true. When Jesus spoke, he spoke as if he, he spoke from his Father. And when Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ died, buried, rose again, came back up and came to... Uh, uh, Paul the Apostle, he gives them some new revelations, some new information, and that's what we're doing when, when we show the contrast between prophetic program, something spoken since the world began, and mystery program is something what? Kept secret since the world began. And if people would just understand and just open their eyes and just, just let the Word of God speak to you the way we teach it, That's half the battle when you don't. You hear what you want to hear. You see what you want to see. You speak what you want to speak. But when you study the word of God, rightly divided, it makes a world of difference, doesn't it? Father, thank you for today. Thank you for the things you've given us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.